You may have often wondered why it is that you have got these toxic individuals in your life. Why maybe they have ever entered into your life. You're not alone in thinking this, but in this video I'm going to explore why toxic individuals are attracted to people like you and why they stick around. I am gonna put a trigger warning here. Some of the information that I'm gonna put in this video might not be favorable to hear. Nevertheless, it is the truth. Watch this video if this is something that you have ever wondered. Hello my friends and welcome back. I hope that you're all doing really well. So in today's video we're talking about why you seem to attract narcissists, toxic people or generally just weirdos. I know that's not really like my professional term but you know what I mean. But there will be certain underlying factors that cause these people to be around you in your orbit. There's psychological, emotional and situational factors that will determine this. Understanding why this is the case is the first step to breaking free from having these individuals in your life. You don't need them around you, you really don't. And so this can make space to have more kind of more healthier relationships or connections around you. But before I get into the video, I just want to mention that I do go live on this channel on the last Tuesday of every month. I usually do a Q&A, so I will be answering uh, your questions, but um, sometimes I do like do certain topics. So do stay tuned, follow me over on this channel, press the bell button, and also do check on the community tab because I kind of like post there all the time. Come on over, I'd love to see you there. Okay, so just putting out a trigger warning again, like the things that I'm gonna talk about, okay, might not be so easy to hear on the ear but look i'm just trying to make you aware that these could be some of those factors it's not meant to trigger any of you it's not trying to make you feel bad or anything like that i'm just bringing to light some of the things that perhaps maybe this may help you to understand why this is going on why these individuals are in your life and now look you're not watching this video for no reason okay my friends i've got you if any of you are affected please know that i do offer one-to-one -one consultations so check in the description box if you'd want to speak to me, I got you. It's going to be fine. So the first thing why you have got these individuals in, in your life is unresolved past trauma. I know, hard hitting. We're straight in there. It is. It's, it's unresolved past trauma. This is all about childhood experiences of neglect, of abuse. And abuse can be emotional, psychological, spiritual, witnessing dysfunctional relationships, like for example, your parents or you know other family members. And what happens is this shapes your expectations, how you view relationships and what you are willing to accept from another person. Like basically how another person should interact with you. Our families are usually the first place or first points of reference that we have on how to understand, to relate, how to be around other people. So if this is dysfunctional in nature, it is going to skew or change our perceptions of how re of how relationships should be or how we should relate or so how someone else should relate to us. There's also something called a repetition compulsion. Sometimes we will seek people unconsciously that mirror past experiences or what you have learned from childhood. And sometimes this could be to resolve unprocessed trauma. This can be done unconsciously, that we're not aware of it, but it is something that we do just so that we can resolve past issues that maybe have not been and that we feel like this person is going to be able to give us what we didn't get in childhood. Also added to the mix is low self-esteem. Yes, my friends, when we have low self-esteem, we have a low value, a low sense of self, a low, you might even tolerate poor treatment because you feel like you deserve it, or maybe you don't know any better, or maybe you believe that you don't deserve any better, or you believe that you might be on your own and that this is really shameful, that this is really bad. So what you will do is you will tolerate when someone, te when someone treats you really badly. And then this bleeds into seeking validation. So people who have low self-worth, they just don't feel like they're worth it. So what they will do is they will repeatedly seek validation from the other person, the other significant person, just to make them feel good. And this makes you susceptible to manipulation and being controlled because let's face it, there are people out there who want that, who exploit this need. 
ultimately. And then what happens is it creates this lack of boundaries because you feel like you don't deserve any better or have not been shown this. Um, and you believe that this other person that that you are with, that you have a lot of value that you love, wouldn't treat you like this. So then what happens is you have a lack of boundaries. You have a difficulty saying no. It's kind of like you struggle with setting boundaries and you find it really challenging to assert your needs because what you have done is you've put your needs to one side thinking that you are not important, you as a person don't really matter, it's really about making the other person happy and this doesn't protect your well-being and it doesn't make it easier for you because you are constantly feeling let down. So then there's the people pleasing tendencies. So it's like what I said, you kind of want to make someone else feel happy, you kind of don't think about your own needs and you do this because you just, you don't want anyone else to feel bad. You don't want anyone else to feel sad. But what you do is you sacrifice yourself in the meantime. And what happens is toxic individuals take advantage of you. That's why they hang around. That's why they stay because they know that your boundaries you know, are malleable, you're not gonna say no, you don't feel great about yourself, and so what they do is they squash your self-esteem and your confidence even more, and that's why then you have people-pleasing tendencies, and this is all at your own detriment. The other major factor that we need to really consider here is attachment styles. You might have an anxious attachment style. And with an anxious attachment style, you tend to cling on to relationships, even when they are harmful, even when they are at the detriment of you, due to your fear of abandonment and a deep-seated um, need for approval. Then you've got the avoidant dismissive attachment style. Conversely, avoidant individuals might attract partners who are overtly needy or controlling, re reinforcing their belief that intimacy is unsafe. If you fall into these two categories of attachment styles, please consider that this could be a reason why these individuals are around you because ultimately they're exploiting you psychologically and emotionally, but they're not limited to these uh, attachment styles. You also have a familiarity with dysfunction. It is something that perhaps maybe you have grown up with, something that you have seen in childhood. So what happens is when someone's treating you a certain way, this becomes familiar and you're like, well, I don't deserve any more. Like this is normal. This is usually what happens. There's comfort in chaos. And you'll find dynamics like this quite familiar, which keeps you stuck in this loop, which makes it really difficult for you to recognize this in a different way and, and hard for you to recognize that you need to make changes, that actually this behavior is abusive and it's causing you emotional trauma. And then what you do is because of this, you equate love, this dysfunctional love with normalcy, pattern prediction. So these dysfunctional relationships or friendships or partnerships can feel predictable and safe compared to something that's unknown, like for example, a healthy love. So it's something that you become used to, which means again, it makes it really hard to recognize and for you to leave eventually. Red flags, ignorance. So you have a hard time to identify this behavior as problematic or toxic. And this creates this lack of awareness. And because you don't know or not familiar with red flags, it makes it really difficult for you to be able to identify it. What I would say to you is really educate yourself, really understand what is going on here, because without this, you're not, you're not going to understand and you're going to, it's going to keep you in this loop. It's going to keep you stuck in this type of dynamic. And then you've got this hope for change. You believe that maybe you can fix your partner or you can change them in some way, or you feel like you can heal them. So you end up staying or you end up entertaining this person longer than you should. Remember, we cannot change a person. I know like you think, oh, maybe we could, maybe you need to do this, but take it from me, working with clients, working with individuals on a daily basis, you can't change a person unless they really want it, unless they are invested in the change themselves. They're the ones that have got to want to do it. You can't do it for them, no matter how much love, how much attention, how much care you give this person, unless they want it, unless they're like, yeah, and they're motivated for change, you can't change a person. You've also got then codependency. 
All right, this is this is a huge one, my friends. Because what happens is you go into, you might be excessively caretaking someone. Codependent individuals derive their sense of identity and self-worth on being able to provide care, being able to provide a service for another person, making them prone to attracting people who are going to exploit them, asking for consistent help or attention. However, just a point that I want to make here that as, as I was saying that sentence, it made me think, you know, their people's love language acts of service right this is a little bit different okay because when you identify with that when it, this is something that you do um on a regular basis and you aren't getting nothing back from another person i know that maybe your love language in this case could be like acts of service doesn't mean that everybody who has this love uh, love language is codependent but it's like someone that you you generally really strongly identify yourself with this and i just want you to know that the two are not the same also in codependency you have the fear of being alone you don't you, you just you don't want to be alone you want to be in a relationship you want to you know you want someone there okay this is the codependency you are not okay with being alone yeah sure i understand being with someone it's lovely but if they are healthy you have healed but if you have a real deep-rooted fear of being alone, not having anyone around you, this can be quite problematic as well. And then you are willing to accept whatever this person is giving you, which makes you more susceptible to not seeing the red flags and being codependent on that person. There could be social and cultural influences here. You've got normative beliefs, which societal and cultural norms about relationships have been programmed or indoctrinated within you. So you're thinking, oh yeah, so it's okay for me to be like this. I should stay in this relationship or marriage. I don't want to leave because it will bring shame on the family, for example. Or there is a real shame of getting a divorce within a particular culture. And what this does is this encourages acceptance of these toxic dynamics in relationships. You've also possibly got the pressure to conform. Family or societal pressures to staying in a relationship, even though it's toxic, you don't want to bring shame on the family or certain people, so you end up staying in this relationship or having these types of partnerships because you can't, you can't leave or you feel or you have a perceived uh, need that you, you can't leave. Guys, in any of these circumstances, if you do find yourself in any of these and you would like someone to talk to, please know that I do offer one-to-one -one consultations. Please see the description box below. But look, there are ways for you to be able to change and get yourself out of this. You don't have to stay in this. Okay, if you are wanting change, and I mean real change, this isn't going to be an easy journey. This is challenging. And it is really hard because it is emotional. It, it, it means that you've got to take a long, hard look at yourself and try to understand why these people or why you are having these individuals around you. You need to bring about self-reflection and self-awareness in order for you to be able to break any of these cycles it is challenging i know this isn't easy but once you do you will realize just how toxic how nasty this was and how much of you was lost in this partnership but above all you need to build your self-esteem and self-compassion this is not your fault ultimately it's not your fault so please do look at yourself with compassion guys i really hope this video has helped um I really hope that you can get some of um, the steps and strategies within this video. I know for a lot of you, this may not have been an easy watch, but I really do hope from the bottom of my heart that it has helped you. And I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye.